on to the adventure and put my on W four C Y three. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and we're now traveling over to Finland for some incredible new music. After eight years, which is phenomenal, I love these bands that are coming back and making great music after all these years. Uh, I think that's the positive of the pandemic is maybe it's sparking some new creativity. So I'd like to welcome to the show Marcus from Kula Malaska. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, I'm doing great. It's quite cold but sunny here in Finland, but uh, yeah, there you go. Beautiful, anyway. <laughs> were Were you impressed that I I I didn't butcher your band name? <laughs> <laughs> well, the name of the band is actually uh, proven to be quite hard to pronounce for um non finished speakers. As for a fin, it's just a basic word. Right. Quite long as such, but but yeah. For Thank American for like it. Yeah, for <laughs> American like me, that's that was my prep for the interview was to it, it, practice pronouncing the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to have stuff to do there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, you have some badass new music. First time in like eight years, and it's coming out today via Zvart Records. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the new album, Kusumo. Well, it's quite diverse. It's actually by far the most diverse Guatemalan Lux album out there. Um, we're still sort of like Death Doom, or our core is in death doom but there's like death metal black metal even some folk elements on on the album and it blends in quite well at least in my personal opinion and uh yeah we worked with uh v santura our longtime producer uh the guitar player from Tri Triptychon. and one badass uh studio engineer a producer guy and I had some help from um, Alexi Munter, uh, a guy who used to play keyboards in uh, Swallow the Sun. And I have done like all the keyboards by myself in the past. So it was very nice to have like a super, super professional guy helping me out. And he actu actually lives in the States right now. So we uh, worked uh, via email and uh, the modern way, so to speak, but it was great fun. Yeah. And you could tell because the music is incredible. And I, I love that, you know, you kind of took what your base foundation was and evolved from that. And cause we're in a, it's so funny as somebody that's very OG metal, like myself, it's so cool nowadays in like 2022 where you can actually blend genres and you don't have to be pinned to one specific subgenre. You can mix other elements in to, to really to release the creativity. Yeah, that is true. And probably one of the reasons that we do that uh, besides uh, making it interesting for ourselves is that uh, my musical taste is very wide as as is uh the other guys's taste in the band so we just uh, incorporate elements from different uh fields of music and just uh make a huge snowball of them and see what comes up and like on this album i think we did a pretty good job 
Oh, yeah, totally. And, and I think it's also part as we get older, our, our music interests expand even more, right? Because we're not as close minded and uh, like kind of like, you know, snobs about music as we were when we were young. Exactly. And that's something that actually is um, when we've gotten like uh, our record label sends us um, reviews that we've gotten from the press and uh, most of the reviews uh, like compliment the fact that the album is so diverse and it goes from one place to another even like within a song but some people are having a super hard time of grasping what's going on as uh, they're more genre uh, oriented yeah and it's hard to pinpoint uh, what genre this is actually right now, as it's all over the place pretty much. But in my mind, it's it still sounds very coherent. But that's something that uh, a couple of uh, reviewers have uh, like pinpointed that, that uh, the songs are good, the riffs are great, and the melodies are fine. But it's hard to grasp what's going on, as it's uh, too varied. <laughs> and that's something that as a fan of music and interesting albums uh i can't comprehend i just it, it would be boring to make uh songs that are sound exactly the same as yeah. on the previous album agreed totally and, and you know what to me it's kind of refreshing because i i, I don't know i kind of like not you know not knowing what to expect and kind of being surprised it goes back to when I was originally into metal. Like, the first metal albums I listened to I had no clue. Like, you, it wasn't like now. You couldn't actually hear what it sounded like. You just saw a cool album cover and like, oh, I'll buy this album and see if it's any good and take the shot, you know? And I think that that is what grows us and, and, and how we learn to like other types of music instead of just being stuck in this box that somebody else put us in. That is exactly true, and that's probably one of the reasons that I personally pay so much attention to um, to the album covers that we have is because I used to be a kid just like you and buy albums uh, based on the album cover, and that's like one of the key elements of an entity of an album, which starts with what you see and then what you hear. So I, I want to incorporate that like and underlined the importance of the album cover artwork. And I'm such a huge fan of like, for example, Sepultura's Arise album cover and like some covers by Iron Maiden that I literally spent like hours of just gazing and wondering what the hell's going on and right. and trying to you know suck up every single detail of of uh, what they have had in mind as far as like symbolism and uh, some funny stuff is concerned and you could find like secret stuff in it you know and like when you look at okay so you mentioned Iron Maiden you know, yeah. at first, when you looked at the number of the Beast album, you didn't realize that, you know, Eddie had uh, the devil as a puppet who had his, someone else at the, as a puppet. You didn't notice those little details that it was like, wow, that really tells the story. Yeah. And when you find that out, it just absolutely blows your mind. Totally. Totally. And, you know, there's some albums back in the day that are my favorite albums today that maybe if I heard them first and didn't see the album first, maybe I wouldn't be listening to them today. You know, and and who knows? Like, I was just talking about another interview, one of the first, like, really serious metal albums, you know, not the commercial ones like Maiden, but the underground stuff that I got exposed to was Venom's Welcome to Hell when it first came out. And, yeah. you know, because there was nothing else like that at that time, if I had just heard it, I don't know what would have happened. It was for me, it was the whole experience and it kind of grew on me. You know, it was like when I first listened to it and I was looking at the album cover and reading the lyrics at first, it kind of, you know, scared me because <laughs> there was nothing yeah. like that yet. And then after a while, I was like, man. 
this is awesome. And, and it just kind of totally changed the whole direction of probably where my music taste would have gone for my lifetime. Yeah, the visual side of it is super powerful and it shouldn't be taken out of uh like um you can't separate the music with the artwork once it's out and yes. that's definitely something that uh i think about enormously when making albums and when buying albums and listening to albums i still buy the physical format like uh lps and cds both nice. i like it you know because there, there's so much more to it like music the artistry of music is not just the sound. It's it's every it's every sense that you have. You use every sense in music, in my opinion. It is, and even the you know the thank you lists and and the lyric sheets and booklets and yep. uh, band photos and it's it's all one big part of uh, of a bigger entity which which constructs the artist basically exactly and you know it's funny that you mentioned earlier in the interview about you know kind of having like folk mixed in because mm -hmm. until you said that one of the things i was going to say you know one of the songs i listened to just was so catchy it was almost like it, it, i hate to even say this it almost was like catchy like it could play on a radio station and become a big hit type of catchy and that and then when you said the folk i went right back to that and like that's must have been what it was is that folk influence in it that gave that little different sound that you wouldn't normally hear in metal and especially doom metal yeah that is probably correct and uh um and in in this this case, I think uh, the melodies that remind of remind me of folk or are folk influenced sound very Finnish to me, and right. probably to another foreign listener. Or and uh, and then there are actually some like uh, far east uh, sort of or or uh, Middle East sort of uh, melodies in there too which kind of make make the wholeness of it uh, interesting. And you know what I find interesting is like you were talking about, you know, people can't figure it out, but people couldn't figure out metal when it first came out anyway. I mean, the whole foundation of metal is experimentation, isn't it? I mean, even look at Tony Iommi, you know, his whole thing was experimentation because he had to deal with cutting off his fingers. And here we are filling his shoes. I don't know if we're succeeding, but <laughs> thank you, Tony Iommi. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. And, and that brings us to today's dropping of the new CD, Kusumu. See, there we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how, do, how will everybody connect to you guys on, on social media, on the web? You got a great website. Definitely they want to check that out. And how do they get this new CD and any merch and all that good stuff? Um, there are a few links to um, like uh, merch stuff on our website, guolamanlaxo.net. And um, you can find our music on like Spotify and streaming services. And we're actually... As far as I know, I think we're actually uh, distributed by a company owned by Sony uh, globally. Nice. Which is very cool. So you should get, uh, you should be able to get the CD from from a bunch of uh, American stores too. I I don't uh, know which ones, <laughs> but uh, it's out there. And uh, a good way to order our um, Albums is from the directly from the record label SwartRecords.com. And you know what? What I also dig about this album is that you have been quoted as saying that you know the previous releases were autumn albums. This is a, a winter album. And, yeah. And it makes so much sense to me because if I think about it, eight years ago and before, it, it kind of seems like that was autumn, and with all the 
bull crap that's going on in the world right now, it definitely feels like winter. <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. And a harsh one. Yes, totally. So thank God we have your music and this new CD, Kusumu, because it is the best therapy you could possibly have during this harsh winter that we're having here in the world. And uh, make sure everybody check it out. Do you have any final words before we leave our listeners? Well, it was basically therapy for us to make the album. And now that it's out, it's not our album anymore. It's your album. So I wish you a happy therapy with Kusumu and all the best from Finland. Well, thank you for the great music and thank you for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio. Radio.